Welcome to the On Your Mind podcast, where we are changing the mental health narrative, bringing hope and solutions. Here's your host, Timothy J. Hayes, psychologist. My next guests are Gabriella Delamora and Marion Krauss. For millennia, people of different cultures have used gongs to access and reconnect with their essence and higher consciousness through sound. Gabriella and Marion provide the vehicle to a guided meditative and transformational journey through a harmoniously layered, multidimensional tapestry of sounds designed to deeply relax and invigorate participants simultaneously. The couple creates a soothing and healing environment of ambient sounds created by five large gongs, a didgeridoo, a flute, hand pan, singing bowls, drums, rattles, and other sound tools, which positively rebalances the mind-body-spirit connection. Participants are presented with an opportunity to lift their awareness about limiting beliefs and how to transform them. Welcome. Thank you both for being here. It's delightful to see you face-to-face. Thank, Thank you, you for very much, Yes. Tim. Thank you for inviting us, Tim. Thank you. I'm, I'm hoping you'll be willing to tell us a little bit about how you got into the work you do and what drives your passion for it. Absolutely, Gabi. You want to go first? You begin, my love. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it kind of started when I was eight, literally. To give you a very brief synopsis, I was literally pulled out of my environment during the Prague Spring, the Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia, because that's where I was born. Mm. So in an instant, I was pulled up and planted into a very different society, Germany, West Germany in those days, because my family emigrated from Czechoslovakia to Germany. And it took me many, many, many years to unravel that conundrum of having been pulled the rock from underneath my feet in an instant when I was a young boy. That ultimately led me to an alcohol addiction. So I began to drink when I was young to basically cope with life. And all that goes with that um, to, yeah, cope with it. And when I turned 30 and I had come to the U.S., I'm going to give you the Cliff Note version here because the story is on our website, which is which is a wonderful read if you are interested in learning more about it. But when I turned 30, I knew that something had to change because one of my main mottos in life is if nothing changes, nothing changes. Yeah. So I joined Alcoholics Anonymous and have been sober since, thanks to the grace of the universe. So that essentially began my inner journey, even though I was always interested in nature, the universe, metaphysics, even though I didn't know that that's what that is at that time. But I then began the process and the path of meditation, mindfulness, inner reflection, and on and on. And I always had been a hand drummer. I was always drawn to the drum. So then part of my journey was to leave my corporate career, which is the one that basically brought me to the U.S. as a job transfer, and um, pursue the path of photography, working with light. So I became a full-time commercial and fine art photographer in 1999, have been doing that ever since. And then as part of that, I came across the gong in 2011 Mm -hmm. and was instantly fascinated with it because of, again, the the whole rhythmic element and then just the sound of what it Mm -hmm. it does and how it feels. Started to learn about it, started to experiment with it, got some gongs, connected with a teacher on the East Coast, read up about the neuroscientific element and neurobiology element of sound. And then in 2014, I was fortunate and lucky enough to meet Gabriela Mm -hmm. at a gong masterclass in Memphis, Tennessee. Yes, and how important it is to him to share and to reflect upon our initial stories because then everything makes like so much sense. Mm -hmm. So in my case, I am originally from Mexico City in a large family. I was, I am the number seven in the, with the siblings. And well, my parents very, very busy. Imagine that, not trying to make things happen 
uh, six women and one uh, man. In a society that has a tendency or a trait of, of the macho, I don't know if everybody is familiar, but it's it can be very difficult. You find a lot of abuse to these vulnerable, like, how do you say, population, women, children, mm -hmm. uh, mostly. So, okay, my family is a loving family, but it's a Mexican family as well, and we were women. And um, part of the dynamic in childhood, uh, yes, I experienced, I had a very good idea of feelings of um, loneliness, abandonment, um, emotional abuse, because we were left like for long periods of time, just the siblings. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was like the law of the jungle. <laughs> 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 no, but my parents were wonderful in the sense that they did really were convinced that they would like to have this family and they would like to make things happen, no, in the way their idea of making things happen. So they worked a lot. They gave us education. So I was able to study initially communications in a very good university. And then so we were always like given good opportunities for that. But then I happened to be like in life and I got married um, and it was like if they put me in, in a game without knowing the rules and having the skills, <laughs> all of a sudden I was there in a, in a very abusive relationship um, and I was not prepared for that. So then I started just uh, first understanding what was happening there. So many, many years began to just to pass. And then finally, when I gave, gave birth to my daughter, yesterday was her birthday, 23 years she turned, uh, that was a moment of questioning myself. Now, what am I going to do now? How am I going to save this, this child, this innocent child? That was a moment of awakening, like wanting to save somebody that is innocent because I didn't want for her to go through so many things no, that happen in life. So uh, that was a moment in which I started to find like ways and try to understand. It helped a lot, Tim, that meanwhile, I continued to study some other things that were like opportunity in that moment. So there was these, uh, I was studying religions, for example, and this was because my sister-in-law back then, she was providing all these services as part of a very important university in Mexico. So I was able to study all these master's degree because I was like the, the uh, her assistant. Uh -huh. So that was wonderful to me because at least that one day when I was studying, it was like full of light and more and more understanding. It was like if layers and layers of all the cultural aspect, including everything, religion, family systems, values, how everything is so relative just to the point in the planet where you are born. And that to me was like, oh my God, eh, this is so amazing. So I was just like so happy and so much into that. Studying all, and anything that was an opportunity for me to study, I study it. Uh, more and more I was aware that I needed to do something like even more profound and consistent. I was just wanting to understand why I ended up experiencing what I was experiencing, which now I understand as psychotherapist that, yes, it makes a lot of sense. When you're experiencing something as an adult, it's because for sure something happened in your childhood and it's just a repetition of the same configuration of elements and emotions and whatever the individual experience, if it was abuse, if it was abandonment, if it was whatever, it, you find a lot of the answers in that initial formation of your psyche. So here it was exactly that. It was so fascinating at least to begin to understand what happened, what was wrong, why was I experiencing that? And my children, because here the motivation, I think the strongest motivation was for them, because by that time, then I had a second child, Emilia, who's now 21. So Emilia and Sophie are my children. And it was 10 years of marriage. Two years before that, I started taking myself a therapy, but it was more my wish to understand and to go further. So then I started studying, studying it as I was treating myself. 
And I was able, I was always uh, wanting to help other women and children, people in situation of abuse, for them to know that they have the right and it is possible for them to have a life with dignity and just respect and love and feeling safe to be who they are. So I was wanting to do so much, but in this society or in the, in the moment where I was trying to do this, I didn't find like openings. Um, I remember trying to talk with people in, in, I was living back then in a state very near to Mexico City as I was married all those 13 years, 10 years married, then three more, I was living in the state of Mexico and trying to find out ways to help these people. I was very active, Tim, like writing a column and then it was like, if I was in a rush, I wanted to make, like to allow people know the possibilities and to be of assistance. And because just because I thought that I understood very deeply those layers and those possible human behaviors. Mm -hmm. I was trying to understand it more and more. And even beyond that, ways to to heal, to transmute, to transform, to overcome mm -hmm. whatever an individual needs to overcome and understand for you to begin the second part of your life, no? Which is to come back to who you really are. Mm -hmm. Then I understood that all our initial story is so necessary as humans. When we arrive here, we need to get information. We, we need to become part of a culture. We need to develop the necessary skills to be a human. And then once you have all that, then you begin to bring all what you are, who you are, and even better because now you have a context. You have an understanding of possible behaviors in humanity. So then you can help and that brings or create a strong passion no? and determination to help in a very specific way or to, yes, to share what you can share. So I started studying. Um, so first it was, I like the sequence because at the beginning it didn't make any sense and then it made perfect sense. It was religions just to, to understand different ways of understanding uh, that connection with the divine and be beyond of who we are, you know, as humans. So religions, arts, different ways to express that unconscious, you know, through arts. Then it was history to understand that the context matters. Of course that matters. Different values, di different ways of understanding life. And finally, I came to the one that was like, this is what I was looking for. And it was psychology. Mm -hmm. So I was able to connect with a wonderful a doctor in psychologist, a Mexican doctor in psychologist, Eduardo de la Fuente, that then became my director in the thesis. In that moment, I was, um, I met Marian. So I'm just like skipping a little bit, just bringing what I think is relevant in my formation. But well, in that story about the, the marriage, I was able to, yes, we were, we got separate 10 years after we got married. Then there were like these, um, I think we met in 2008, no, 2014. 2014, and I got separate in 2008, mm -hmm. not 2005, mm -hmm. uh -huh. 2008, finally I got the divorce because that was a very tough situation. Um, struggling a lot, but becoming stronger and stronger, understanding how that society work in many, many ways. And always this trait of the macho in the system. Mm -hmm. It's it's like something very prevalent. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, I met Marian as I was doing this uh, workshop with um, to learn and to get certified in this modality, the gongs, um, which is ancient, but now, this is very recent. Now they are using the gongs as a way of meditation, as a way to release stress and anxiety, as a way of expansion, as a way of healing, which is beautiful. Before meeting Marian, so all this, what I was trying to do in, in media, in um, how do you say, uh, media channels. I, I was for 17 years working in different TV, TV channels, TV programs as a host and 
for many years was writing my column, having, having radio programs, and it was all always focused on balance, harmony, how is it possible to live a better life, and so on and so forth. So then doing that with the media, with media, I, was, I also was able to present my book, um, Un Minuto Para Ti, and uh, it was talking with somebody that let me know, you know, for the work that you are doing, because also I was very active now in, uh, with, with different um, leaders. So I was, uh, we were together creating these programs to work directly with the community women, children, and in general, but more women and children. So as I was doing these workshops, uh, they let me know about the gongs. And that is when I went there to Memphis and I met Marian. Um, and now what I am doing, we are doing together the these group experiences with the sound, which is beautiful. And what I continue to work individually is with other tools uh, of psychology, life coaching. There was, a, I include a lot of meditation with universal energy and then the sound. So more or less, um, this would be like the sequence or parts in, in my story. It's, it's a little challenging because of the language, but it's I am wonderful. still working it's, on that. It's, it's right there. <laughs> Trust me, your yeah. English is far better than I am in any other language. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you, Tim. So the question I have is, what have you learned as the two of you were exploring gongs and vibration and sound and healing? What have you learned about that that you can start sharing with our audience because I know a lot of people who'll hear this have not had any experience with mm -hmm. sound as a healing modality. Mm -hmm. Well, sound is something that we cannot turn off. We can we can close our eyes for sight, but we can't close off sound. Mm -hmm. So we are constantly surrounded by different sounds. And if we consider that the vagus nerve that starts in the brainstem and connects all our major organs, it weaves its way through the body and it connects all major organs, it's very closely um, located to the ears. So anything that comes through our ears essentially touches the vagus nerve and through that it resonates through your entire body. So sound, the influence of sound upon our well-being cannot be underestimated. If you consider that you are subjected to a, to a jackhammer, for instance, in a construction site, or you're subjected to bird songs, very, very vast difference and contrast. And you will know or you will notice when you really hone in on it, what kind of an effect those two different sounds create within you. One is very stressful, at least that's what it would be to me. Yeah. The other one is very soothing, right? So this is just a very crass example of what sound does. So with... Go Sorry, ahead. it was in addition to this example, imagine the voice of, of your mother as you're a child. Yes, of course. It can be so soothing. Of course, if I wanted to get to that, yes. singing a lullaby, if she's telling you, good, wonderful, I love you, or she can be in a different frequency. Of course. Because, well, continue and then I yeah, will share no, my part um, of frequency. Gabby just mentioned it, and I wanted to get to it, the word, right? Because word is sound. So... What we think and what we say is of immense importance, and we'll get a little bit more into that. But what I wanted to what I wanted to continue with was that, with regard to the sound of the gongs, like Gabi had alluded to before, they have been used for thousands of years. The oldest written record of gongs have been used in shamanistic, ritualistic, celebratory healing. Uh, and ceremonial purposes goes back about 4,000 years. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, we are or we have been rediscovering the healing and transformational properties of the gongs. And to come to come back to your question, what 
what have we learned or what have we found out? As far as I'm concerned, it's a very powerful and effective tool to raise your consciousness, to raise your awareness. When you are surrounded by the sound of gongs, you literally, you connect with the universe, with the unified field, with God, whatever you choose to call it based upon your belief system. It surpasses your thinking mind. It goes beyond that and it allows you to tap into your unconscious as well as your conscious mind. If you combine it with an intention, which is extremely important in all of this to really get the full benefit of it, if you combine it with an intention, the intention of the presenter as well as the intention of the receiver, it is a wonderful vehicle for personal transformation. It triggers the parasympathetic nervous system and triggers a deep relaxation response, which then allows you to go into the homeostasis aspect of your being, which is where you begin to heal, where you begin to replenish, where you begin to reboot, literally reboot your system. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a very, very powerful and effective vehicle for healing and for raising your consciousness and your awareness, because that's essentially what life rests on, right? How aware and how conscious are we about our words, our actions, our behaviors, and the resonance, since you mentioned resonance a little earlier, and I completely agree about the importance of resonance and entrainment, because it's the resonance that then brings us back what life mirrors to us in terms of what we put out or what we share, whether it's behavior, words, thoughts, and so on. Uh -huh. Or just the symbols and the situations yes. of the past that you are not even aware, but they are there in this part of the mind, no? Always very active sending signals to the environment that make you connect with the similar mm -hmm. uh, circumstances, similar people, and of course, feeling, making you feel the very familiar emotions, no? Mm -hmm. uh, so what I found, Tim, for example, with the sound was this sense of beautiful sense of freedom, the space, the necessary space, hmm. which is something that you cannot describe. It's something that you need to feel. Yes. And then as you study why and the sound, because this is something that when I experienced it for the first time in this uh, workshop, then I was wanting to find more and then understand what I just experienced <coughs> because what I found was this like bubble of freedom and well-being, harmony with nothing else that I was needing. Uh, it was just that that space that many humans are we are we are searching for that mm -hmm. kind of a space to really feel who am who am I and mm -hmm. to really be able to feel safe to go to those parts of your childhood and understand better, but feeling safe. So the sound provides with that is so powerful in so many ways. Mm -hmm. So then I was wanting to understand and research a little more. I could not find any research and information in those years. So then I thought I'm going to start doing my own observations with the sound. So that was my thesis. It was focused on uh, this case of an 11 year old girl with brain paralysis and some traits of autism and I started working. It was just a, not a long study. It was just the opportunity to observe through four months what could happen in, if in the different practices we include the sound mm -hmm. of the gongs and even for her to be able to make the sounds. So it was based on different, well, different practices such as regression and so. Um, it was so incredible. The, the, the same team of therapists that were treating this girl, because she was receiving therapy for, uh, talk, speech. Uh, to, for speech, speech, for movement, and many other things, mm -hmm. for her to be able to, the vision and all of that, they were like, what is happening with this? With mm -hmm. with her, what is happening? Something is happening now. The body is relaxed now. Mm -hmm. She is not. The world is constipated. Yes. 
because she used to be, for example, constipated like for six days, seven days, and then all of a sudden, every day she would do her uh, the, the release. Yes, yeah, a release. Or, for example, the voice team. The voice could not, the, all what she could say in Spanish to say yes is si. She would only say s. And those were like her verbal. Right. Like, no, after the sound, and this was in the very first session, just with the singing bowl, it got released the voice. So it was a C, but a deep, deep C. And then she said vaca, which is cow. So they were like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And many other things. For example, she would only interact with inanimated objects, just objects, no? So this was an observation of the dad. He was saying before I could do anything and everything for, for her to see, to look at me, and she would just mm -hmm. avoid, she would just look to the wall as, as it happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the, the gongs, she was so interactive, even though she doesn't, she, she didn't have the speech, she was interacting and she was looking in the eyes and she was, he, they were even like annoyed, like now we cannot stop it. I, say. <laughs> I mean, we're driving and she's wanting to participate and something incredible happened. And of course it was very related to her initial story because when she was being born, her twin sister was dead for one month in the womb of the mother. So there, she was always at the beginning surrounded by fear and contraction and frustration. And also when she was born, for example, she was for a longer time, not with her mom, no, in this connection, feeling safe, but connected because they need, needed to for things to happen, no? for her to be alive. So it was so much trauma that with the sound of the gun, she began to just release and release. So she, she was no longer in contraction. So the body was moving. She was no longer in contraction. So the voice was flowing. She would be able to go to the bathroom. And this was so powerful to me. So powerful. It was incredible. And, and then Yes, so what I find for myself is a beautiful tool um, in therapy to overcome childhood trauma, for example, or simply to reduce that anxiety that is just like growing. Mm -hmm. uh, they were saying that 120 million additional cases of anxiety and how it is affecting children and young uh, adults. adults. Mm -hmm adults so this is a beautiful vehicle plus it happens in that moment during that session yes. there are people that had reported to us like this was better than mushrooms or ayahuasca which <laughs> it's yes. unfortunate however it is but people are taking these vehicles to really overcome yes. trauma and to feel that they are not trapped in this fear so for them to tell us this was even more powerful, well, and it doesn't have side effects, side effects yes. which is beautiful. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. I like to tell people, you know, you say the word side effect and that's just semantics. That's playing games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so not a side, side effect. effect. It's an effect. Exactly. It's an effect that I don't want. It's not right. in the side. I'm taking because I want this effect and this effect, but I take it and I get all these effects. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's an advertising gimmick to get us to take something that's poison to say, exactly. take this and you'll have this effect and these side effects. It's so cruel. It is <laughs> but, cruel. But, and it's, but it's, all it's of a, the it, effects are beneficial from the sound, the vibration. Yes. The healing. There, is no, exactly. there is no negative effect. If, right? I, I mean, if we just consider <laughs> that we are frequencies because we are these yes. trillions of molecules in different frequencies, that when we are happy in love and creative energy, it means that your frequencies are so high, high. in good yes. frequency, every molecule. When we are in fear, in anger, uh, or Contract. just experiencing symptoms and disease, mm -hmm. that is because the frequencies are so low. So imagine that these instruments, what they help us with this um, wave, sound wave, is helping our frequencies to be amplified. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, they feel like, oh, my pain is gone, or, or emotional pain. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just like so incredible. It's it 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 sorry it it goes back to entrainment. Uh -huh. 
to the principle of entrainment. So we mentioned resonance a little earlier and entrainment is another aspect of this because essentially entrainment was discovered by a, a, a Dutch clockmaker mm. in the 1700s. He had one large cuckoo clock going at a certain kind of a uh, pace. Rhythm, and, rhythm. Yeah. Um, and the surrounding clocks in the room that he was making were going at a different kind of a rhythm. Mm -hmm. So when he came back in the morning um, in the same room, he discovered that all were going, I get goosebumps just talking about it, were mm -hmm. all going in unison. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see that in action, we have a page on our website. Um, it's under vibration. You can see a video of metronomes, like 40 metronomes being started yes. just randomly. And after about three or four minutes, they are all in unison. So the principle of entrainment essentially is if there is a larger energy source or a higher frequency mm -hmm. range, it entrains the surrounding ones and pull, kind of pulls them or resonates with the others to be in sync. Mm -hmm. So these gongs with the broad spectrum that yes. they provide, harmonics, the basically the whole tonal spectrum, depending upon how you play them and what you do with them and all of that, provide you a wonderful way to entrain. And again, it's coupled with the intention. And we set our intention every time before we begin one of our events mm -hmm. upon love, gratitude, expansion, harmony, Joy, peace, mm -hmm. healing. So with all those emotions that you feel expansive, that make yes, you feel good. Yes. So by putting those out into the space, we perfume the space. Literally, we perfume the space with a very specific intention of what we want individuals to experience. And it's a like we mentioned a little earlier, it's an experiential event. There is another experiment yes. can, for, for people to imagine those experiments. This is a Japanese uh, man just creating with these rubber mallets. Uh, with one of these, just in a, uh, in a so, uh, surface of it's like a steel, this. It's a steel plate, yes. So what he does is just to put some powder. I don't yeah. know if it's like flour or something. Yes. And then he just begins to rub yep. and to create the sound, this yes. kind of sound. And it creates this yes. beautiful organization. It's like if they, all of a sudden, like mandalas begins, mm -hmm. but a perfect symmetry, a perfect symmetry. And it begins to change depending, but it's so symmetrical yes. and so in such a perfect order. So imagine that that happens. Yes. That happens on a molecular thank level. For, thank you for bringing that up. That is the science of cymatics, mm -hmm. the study of waveforms. Um, so you can see to understand what is happening. Yes, we have a, a wonderful movement. page on our website about cymatics where you can see a number of different videos that very clearly show what Gabi just mentioned. And the fascinating element about that is, is that those patterns that essentially are created by sound frequencies mm -hmm. are repetitive patterns that occur in nature. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can, you will see, you well, visually, you will see how many of the patterns that are being created on these, on these different media resemble visual patterns like the, for instance, occur in zebra stripes or leopard right. skin and things yeah. like that. So, so make sure to look so it up. It's a fascinating subject. Cymetics. And like Gabi said, if you consider that we are all um, molecules, and if we if we consider that we consist seventy percent, about seventy percent of water, and water being a very very conductive element of sound, you can only imagine what, what happens. happens to us when we are subjected to different sounds, like we said in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, and it happens like in one second. You can see it there. In yes, example. it's fascinating. Another uh, experiment or way to exp uh, ex um, explain it was. Uh, by the assistant of Masaru Emoto, Dr. Mm. Masaru Emoto. Mm. I was just going to mention that. Yes, and, yes and, exactly. And, 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 and when you look at the crystals that get formed in water, yes. when you quick freeze it, after the water's been exposed to these various sounds, positive mm -hmm. words, different types of music, mm -hmm. you yeah. see the impact of the yes. vibrations on the water. And then, as Marion just said, this 
vehicle that we're traveling in yes. is more water than anything else. Yes. Exactly. So imagine the impact on your body when you walk yes. into a room and people are pouring those positive intentions exactly. and, and adding the vibrational frequencies exactly. of your gong in a therapeutic way. It's, yes. it's off the charts beneficial. Yes, yes and, and it begins with the with the thought. Yes, you know, because at the end, absolutely. everything is a frequency. Not, not not only the sounds that we can perceive, but there are sounds that we cannot perceive because the right. frequencies are in a different range Outside of what of our, our range, ear right. can listen. We, only, we, we get less than one percent exactly of, of, Imagine, of, no? of the frequencies the spectrum, of both right. the electromagnetic spectrum and what we would call the audible spectrum. We yes. get one percent of it, but it's still Imagine. there. Yes. That's why the, the water became our perfect uh, teacher showing us, look at those frequencies that you're not even aware of. Mm -hmm. Even the written word and everything has a frequency. So mm -hmm. to be exposed or to share those frequencies. Mm -hmm. So uh, that well, I, I think I, I that's study. Because I want to tag on to and build on what you were saying. Bruce Lipton's work looking yes. at yes. human cells under an electron microscope yes. taught yes. us that every cell in your body has either this rest and digest function or this yes. protect shutdown function. Mm -hmm. It also has every cell in your body has this receptor site for your mind energy. Mm -hmm. So even though you might be in a safe environment, if your mind is saying, Oh my gosh, I can't, <laughs> this is dangerous. Exactly. All the cells in your body go into this shut yes. down protective mode, which yes. is good for a brief period. Yes. But if it stays in that mode, that's mm -hmm. what that chronic young girl that you were talking about in, in yes. your thesis example was, she was constantly in that tension mm -hmm. shutdown yeah. mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the natural state is to grow, to relax, to create, yes. to yes. expand. expand. Yes. So if we get, if we, you know, can, like you're saying, you set the intentions in that positive way. And mm -hmm. then we assist the body in softening and relaxing and basically mm -hmm. allow people to flow with a simple loving thought. And mm -hmm. then you assist the body to vibrate at that higher, more natural frequency. It wants to go back there. It wants yes. to yeah. be healthy and heal. Yes. It isn't that it's so much work to heal. It's yeah. as you were both mentioning, it's work to identify and release the trauma that's more important. Release. Yes. Yes, yes, because if not, we can apply different affirmations and positive words and loving words, but it, trauma remains mm -hmm. without knowing all of a sudden thoughts just happen. It's not <laughs> that I'm going to think horrible thoughts and have these horrible. No, they just happen yeah, without like, being aware, what, just because you are distracted and boom, yeah. there they are. Well, so, because it's there as that energy. And exactly. just like when you tap the gong. It just keeps resonating the energy. You don't have to keep banging the gong. It's going to vibrate the energy. Well, the trauma's in there. Right. And if something in your life today reminds you of that trauma, it gets the gong going of the negative, yes. right? Exactly. Of, yes. of that exactly. vibration of, of it's dangerous and we better shut down. And so it's yes. all that automatic process that yes. we Definitely. can, with the help of tools like yours, become mm -hmm. aware of and start to release Exactly. Release. You know what, it's all about release and opening up blockages, right? Uh -huh. yes. I would like to mention something very related to what you were just uh, sharing, Tim. Because, for example, at the beginning, when Manon was sharing the sound and explaining uh, the origins of the gongs and why the gongs and mm -hmm. all of that, of course, there was this possibility that people that would come with deep, deep trauma would have a very bad reaction. So that's when we started, uh, I was like mm -hmm. um, very much proposing to prepave the path, mm -hmm. to really um, allow people to focus on a very specific experience in that specific moment with the sound, because yes, everything gets amplified. So not anyone just can play the gong and that's the healing. I think it's so healing, but you also, in specific cases where there's a lot of trauma, there's more that we need to add 
for for it to really get like released and then for people to really be able to tap into the different frequencies of love and gratitude and all of that. So to finish just the example mm -hmm. of the assistant of Masaru Emoto, exactly. She was just like trying to show that the, the same as Masaru would do mm -hmm. when he was alive by using the tuning forks in different mm -hmm. frequencies. Mm -hmm. So let's say she had a mm -hmm. 34 hertz and a 35 hertz, so very close, very close the hertz. And then she, in the other hand, had a 35. If she would play that 35, the only one that would resonate would be the 35, not the 34. So this was the way for her also to explain or for him to explain to people that it is us, the one that are attracting and finding resonance mm -hmm. with specific people and circumstances in the field, in life, because of the frequencies that we are carrying in, in our unconscious mind, mm -hmm. in our conscious mind, with the words that we speak, with the same patterns that we are so familiar with. So that awareness of the law of attraction or law mm -hmm. of resonance, it was so beautifully explained there. So yes, just by working within, using the frequencies of the gongs to amplify ours, our own frequency, your complete life changes. Mm -hmm. And not only this life that we are seeing in front of us and our interactions, our job, our relationships, but our biology as mm -hmm. we know, Tim, no? Because which, we are sending those frequencies to every cell. Yes, which then translates in into what we experience, right? Because it all begins on the inside and then it goes out to the outside. Like Gabi was saying, so we, attract, true healing. we attract what we think about and what we envision and on and on and on. But allow me to really briefly mention, since we mentioned gongs and tools that we use. So if we consider the didgeridoo, the didgeridoo has been used by the Aborigines of Australia for about 40,000 years, 40,000 years yes. for healing, again, transformative, celebratory, and just simply purposes to connect with the higher realms and thereby to recreate a connection or to reconnect with the higher realm within ourselves. Because as we know, we are all consciousness and consciousness is all there is. So we are a part of it. We are part of nature and on and on and on. We could talk about this for hours, right? But the didgeridoo we use as well, then we use singing bowls, Himalayan singing bowls, um, Flutes, we use the drums. native flute, we use drums, we use rain sticks, we use different tools, shakers, because the also ocean rhythm. drum, yeah, it's so it's, it's rhythm, yes, rhythm, pulse, again, there is so much to talk about when it comes to this, but it is important to understand, again, that this is, this is a very powerful tool or vehicle to accompany us in the process of healing and understanding and integrating the things that we mentioned and that we talked about. It comes down to integration and then practice, remembering yes, a reinforcement and that practicing it. Because as we know, the tsunami of thoughts continues and it is our choice what we choose to think about, right? It is mm -hmm. our choice to remember whether we feed ourselves, literally feed ourselves good, positive, expansive thoughts, healing thoughts, supporting thoughts, or whether we go into the fight and flight response mode and think about gloom and doom and or what if. And this is obviously amplified by media. But I mean, if you just open up social media or news, it's like, as, it's and, a swamp. Mm -hmm, talking about that uh, capacity to choose, I think that is where, for example, when I was mentioning the in the sense of inner freedom, that space within ourselves, um, as Viktor Frank re refers to it, there is a space always, no? Mm. So for people just to to see it this way, there is what life is presenting to you in front of you and then it's yourself and then there is a space no between the event and the receiver or the or you and this space is the one that you can really utilize no to choose as Marin was mm -hmm. saying how am i going to feel and what am i going to think because that is our 
that is our right and that is a possibility. But if without this space, without the awareness mm -hmm. that this space exists, so then I cannot choose. I'm just pulled mm -hmm. by all of a sudden without thinking and without wanting. I'm in this anguish mm -hmm. and in this anxiety just because there was something in the environment that that reminded Triggered. me of my childhood and the feelings yeah. that I used to have with my abusive dad or my mom or my mm. teacher or my bully mm -hmm. sister or whatever. And you begin, you're already there in that, mm -hmm. um, in that emotion. So just with Instantaneously, awareness. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Inst so just like that. so yes, this is perfect. Like well, I want to make sure that before we wrap this up, we give people an opportunity to find out how they can tap into Gabby's website, your team yes. website, uh, and there was an offer you, you were going to make, Mary. Yes. So before we get into that, I also wanted to mention really briefly, one of the elements that we provide as part of this is a meditation. It's a guided meditation, and that is an integral and important part of this. Gabby, with her beautifully soothing voice, I always say that she could be reading the yellow pages and I would be just melting. So anyways... She provides a wonderful guided meditation of about seven, eight, nine minutes in length that circles or pivots around a very specific topic, whether it's expansion, whether it's gratitude, whether it's healing, whether it's flow and things of that nature. So that is very, very important to mention because it's about mindful, it's about meditation, it's about, again, introspection and, and healing. So our website, where Gabi and I work together, to provide various um, vehicles of what we talked about is delamora.life. So that's D-E-L-A-M-O-R-A dot life, delamora.life. And one of the elements that we have on there is a membership, a monthly membership where we provide four or five, depending upon how the dates fall, live stream events in this setting, right from where we are right now, where we provide provide an hour long um, sound bath, sound mm -hmm. meditation. Yes. And the 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 offer I wanted to mention, and maybe we can somehow blend it in into the into the video part, is a free month for you to try it out. So it will be it will be we'll we'll somehow figure it out how to a code some kind of a code, but it's something that needs to be experienced. Yes. And there's also the website where I provide my services, which is Gabi de la Mora. And the way it's spelled is G-A-B-Y-D-E-L-A-M-O-R-A. -E so Gabi de la Mora dot com. And there you will find what Marian was mentioning, the guided meditations. But you can also get like your own guided meditation for your own situation, mm -hmm. your specific healing, whatever you are needing or struggling with. And that's very powerful because it's also with the sound, the sound of the gongs. And there's also like the offering of spaces, therapeutic spaces, mm -hmm. just talking therapy, always in combination with the sound. And you will find different mindfulness practices for free there in the website, online courses with mindfulness mm -hmm. and the sound, which to me, is the way to really transform your life. What team does and this combination of different modalities mm -hmm. to, for really for, for, for you to become mindful, for you to become yeah. the observer and for you to work and release what you need to release, mm -hmm. to transform what you need to transform, and then you will see it. So it is not that the medication is going to give you the peace. It mm -hmm. is you that is going to understand at last what is happening. So then you transform that and then you see this balance and harmony in your life. So yes, look up for for those websites. It's yeah. another Wonderful. one of the options. Mm -hmm. And and if they mention that they heard it on the On Your Mind podcast, they can get a free month of that exactly. online yes. experience. Yes. Exactly. Wonderful. And we somehow again will share it um the code. Yes. We want to thank you, Tim, and all the helping angels that you have in what you are doing for having given us the opportunity yeah. to be a part of it and to introduce what we are doing. You're most welcome and deserving. And as I mentioned, I'm going to tap in and see if you'll be willing to do another interview in the near future where we can expand Wonderful. some of these things. Yes. And what we can do during that one, we can maybe give a little sample. 
Wonderful. Because again, mm-hmm. it's about experiencing it. Excellent. Okay, so. Well, thank you so much, both of you. It's been a delight. And I will be in touch Likewise. soon to schedule a follow-up. Thank you very thank much. You, thank, thank you. you. Blessings. Bye-bye. As a life coach with master's degrees in psychology, art, and religions, enriched by 17 years as conductor and anchor on national TV programs related to health and well-being, and as author of the book, On Minuto Parati, Gabriella's goal is to share specific ways of integrating a wholesome and balanced life with her audiences, completing a 20-year international corporate career, and transitioning into the adventure of entrepreneurial endeavors as a visual artist, Marion's extensive studies in metaphysics contribute to his heightened intuitive perceptions and interpretations. Both Marion and Gabriella have studied gongs and sound therapy with renowned master teachers, and their European and Latin American origins and inherent artistic and musical abilities possess a colorful life history, thus working seamlessly together to facilitate a truly unique, consciousness-expanding experience. Please visit delamora.life, D-E-L-A-M-O-R-A dot L-I-F-E, or gabbydelamora.com, G-A-B-Y-D-E-L-A-M-O-R-A dot com for more information. In order to support the ripple effect of positive resonance and expand the community of kindred spirits, Gabriella and Marion want to offer our listeners and this community a free one-month access to their online groups for each of their websites. These free memberships provide convenient opportunities of reinforcement to maintain the momentum of stress and anxiety reduction introspection, personal transformation, healing, and more. For the Delamora Transformational Experiences website, please visit delamora.life slash members, D-E-L-A-M-O-R-A dot L-I-F-E slash members, and use the code Journeys Dream Sound on checkout to receive the free month access. You've been listening to the On Your Mind podcast, offered by Journey's Dream, where we support people through mental health challenges to a place of true and lasting well-being. If you love our show, we invite you to visit onyourmindpodcast.org to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our helpful resources. Thank you for listening.